Welcome back to Perspectives here on Arise News. Stephanie Coker is a TV host, actress, producer, and entrepreneur. As a champion of womanhood, Steph is dedicated to bringing light issues faced by women in Africa from health to how they live their daily lives. Her debut documentary, Where the Heck is My Period, follows the journey of 11 Nigerian women who struggle through polycystic ovarian syndrome, a hormonal disorder, and one of the leading causes of inf infertility. Today, Stephanie shares her own experience with PCOS, which relates to her and all women who may see themselves in her. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you for having me, Auntie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we are, I like Korean. Yeah, looking so pretty. I like this Thank jacket you. too. Thank you. Michael's inherited so after the show. Yes, of course. It's you know Nigerian. Made, made Proudly Nigerian. Nigerian. Proudly Nigerian. Okay. You know, after I spoke to you yesterday, I actually got thinking, and I was thinking to myself, it's not easy to be a woman. No. I mean, there you are, looking so pretty, looking well put together, and everything, and you are carrying. An ailment or a, I don't know what, what to use. A syndrome. A syndrome <laughs> that people don't even know exists. Most people, I mean, until you told me about it. Yeah. I didn't know it existed. So please tell us exactly what PCOS is all about. Yeah, so PCOS is um, a hormonal imbalance disorder um, mm. and <clears throat> it affects one in six women one in, six. in Nigeria. Yes. And so it's that's very of, rampant. Yes, exactly. And it's one of the leading causes of um, infertility amongst women of um, reproductive age, of childbearing mm -hmm. age. Um, and its symptoms cut across, like from mental health to um, your reproductive system and even like you, just so many things, like your, your weight as well, your nutrition. So it's one of those things that doesn't have enough light on it, um, but it affects so many women. And so many people don't know about it. And there are still young girls, little babies being born still with this syndrome. So it's not something that's going to go away anytime soon, especially because if you ask me what causes PCOS, the exact cause is still unknown. But what are the symptoms though? Um, so the main symptoms of PCOS are irregular periods, um, hirsutism, which is excessive hair growth on the face and body, hormonal imbalance. Um, so that can cause like, you know, your voice to change because the, the, an the androgenin levels are disrupted. Um, also weight gain and um, hormonal acne. You even said something about shoe size. That's yes, like yes, yes. Yeah, even on the documentary, you see there's a girl that says that her shoe, her shoe size fluctuates. Yeah, wow. because of this syndrome. Okay, but you also had a movie called Where the Heck is My Period, a documentary. Yeah. So could you share some of the experiences of the people that you featured in that documentary, some um, of the stories? Yes, yeah, so there are, there are different stories because the women are from different demographics. We have a, a house lady on there. We have, you know, different people from different tribes, ages, and some were married, some unmarried, some divorced. One was even divorced, um, uh, and PCOS played a major factor because she was unable to get pregnant. That was one of the reasons. Um, another one she had she gave birth to a baby and after wait after trying so many times to get pregnant because of PCOS but she still ended up um, losing the baby unfortunately and when she had a stillborn um, some of the other issues is confidence you know you go outside and you'll see that you know somebody just points out something like oh you have hair on your face and it's like yeah obviously I can see that I, I looked in the mirror but must you point it out so th there was a lady on there that said someone said that to her and it just ruined her whole day um, there's also the judgment that they, the women feel they get from the hospital. So when they walk in there, the, pe some doctors tell them that, oh, you need to lose weight. Once you lose weight, that's when the PCOS will be reversed. And that's not entirely true. Yes, it has to do with your weight factors, but I'm not overweight and I have PCOS. But you also said that when you have periods, you can have periods for a very long time. Yeah, there are women that bleed for three to six months wow. with PCOS. Um, I personally, uh, I, I, I didn't, and there's also the irregularity of the PCOS, uh, of the menstrual cycle. So I personally didn't have a period for a whole year. Wow. Yeah, a whole year I didn't have a period. And when it came back, it didn't want to stop. I was admitted to hospital. And this is whilst trying to be a mother, a wife, a TV personality, trying to show up for life. And these things are happening. And I'm not the only one that's affected by this. 
So, so how has this affected the mental health of a lot of people who go through these experiences? Um, it causes a lot of depression because of the hormonal imbalance. Um, it causes a lot of people wake up for, with fatigue. So you can sleep the normal eight, seven, eight hours and still wake up tired. And people might just think, oh, you're making excuses. Why so it you makes tired? you sleep when you're it, on medication? No, they're not, not on the medication, but just having PCOS. It, it's oh, dream. it's one it of the side effects. Yes, yes. One of the okay. symptoms, fatigue. Yes. So how does that differ from endo endometriosis? Uh, yeah, so endometriosis. Oh, endo endometriosis. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, that one is, uh, yeah, it, it is. So endometriosis is more to do uh, with, uh, I know one of the main symptoms of that one is the painful periods, very painful, excruciatingly painful. And I believe it's to do with the endometrial lining. PCOS is more to do with the ovaries and um, the, the cysts that are at the, on the ovaries. When it, when it comes to PCOS, the poly in polycystic is for small, so that means tiny ovaries, um, tiny cysts on the ovaries, and that's what's disrupting the release of eggs. Because you know, if you don't ovulate, you can't get pregnant. Like it's, uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. and that's what the disruptor is with PCOS and fertility. That's how the that's where the link is. You know, but I've 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 never been situations where you've had, or well, people who have PCOS have had issues with their relationships. Yes. Because the partners yes, can't comprehend or understand. So I'll tell you something else about PCOS. Because of the um, hormonal levels uh, <laughs> being up and down, you know your libido can sometimes be lowered. So there's women with PCOS that find it hard to be sexually stimulated, to want to really do anything because they're just not in the mood. But what causes this? What causes this? Yeah, it's, it's the hormonal imbalance because okay, the testosterone and estrogen, okay. yeah, they're, they're not balanced. Okay. Yeah. So what, are, what steps are you taking to create more awareness about this? Yeah, so through this documentary, we are doing school tours to educate girls in secondary schools and also university level as well. At university level, we hope to be able to do diagnostic testing. So the main two tests that you need to do for PCOS is a blood test and then also um, a scan as well. And if, if they can't really see the cysts on the ovaries, um, then they'll have to do a transvaginal scan. But even if you have cysts on your ovaries, it does not necessarily mean you have PCOS, hence why you really do need to do the, um, the blood test. So that's what we're doing. We're, and we're also hoping to, fingers crossed, partner with the Ministry of Health um, to get mm -hmm. endorsement on this as well. So that's, yeah, we, and through this documentary, it's a, it's, the documentary is available on Prime worldwide. So it, people can really... But at what, at what age can you even know that you have PCOS? Um, from it, when can't you be, it can't be before you start your period. Or no, from, from no, birth. no. It's once, once you're of reproductive So um, once you age. start your period. Yes, exactly. But how, would it, how long does it normally take for it to dawn on you that you have it? Yeah, so once you see that there's um, an irregularity with your, with your daughter, your niece in, in her menstrual cycle, um, that's a telltale sign. If you see... Um, hormonal acne is very common with teenagers, so um, that's a bit of a tricky one. But that, that was something that I picked up on and decided to go to my GP. Um, then also, the I would say the excessive hair growth. So hair on the face, on the neck, or anywhere else on the body where hair doesn't usually grow for women. Um, and maybe weight as well, like fluctuating weight gain as well. I think that's um, another major one. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot going on with PCOS. It's... It's a syndrome that needs a lot more awareness because, as I said, there are young girls that are being that that don't know what they're going through. Imagine I was in secondary school and I had to I had to cover my face most of the time when I was walking around. Well, but your hair is your hair's really that yeah. that obvious. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Niger girl. <laughs> I had I had thick curly hair growing on my face, and people. There was one girl that actually said, "Oh, you have hair like a gorilla." Are you serious? Yeah, and it just ruined my day. And you know, it's so funny because my dad used to tell me that, oh, it's fine. Men like men like women with hair, like with a lot of hair on their body. And I was like, which man would like a woman that has a lot of hair on their body? Like, well, it could help with the hair on your head. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I do have very thick hair. So, <laughs> but that's another. But another um, symptom of PCOS is actually thinning of the hair for some women. Okay. So yeah, you could be lucky. Anyway. You could be yeah. But I would just tell you that I actually um, did a fertility treatment to get pregnant. Um, I used IVF to get pregnant. And that's one of the things um, people, that's one of the leading issues with PCOS. People focus on that. And I did IVF and it costs so much money, about $30,000. Yeah, but does that affect the, the chances of success when you have PCOS? Yes. Does it also Yes, lessons? it does. 
the chances of your um, success of well, success of IVF? I wouldn't say it, ne it lessens, but it it is the one of the causes for you to want to have to do IVF okay. and spend that amount of money. And you know, IVF is also not certain. It's a very mm. expensive oh, yes. treatment. As yeah. I said, I spent over thirty thousand dollars doing this. I could have built a company, but yeah. you know, like so. Um, there's that, and then I also developed another syndrome. Which yeah, is, because I have PCOS, it's more common for you to develop OHSS, which is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. What does that mean? Which is a life-threatening syndrome. Um, it's um, it's when the, your ovaries overstimulate and create too many eggs, which means that, um, you become incapacitated. I was in I was in a wheelchair. I was in a wheelchair for about a month. I couldn't walk. I was coughing up blood clots wow. because um, I had excess fluid and I had to be aspirated um, for about a week. Is the word aspirated? Yeah. Um, but they had to drain the fluid from my stomach. You also said it could cause cancer too. Yes, it can cause endometrial cancer. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, so, it's... What, last, what last word do you have for those who might be going through this same kind of... Um... Um, issues. Yeah. What last word do you have to give them in, in terms of words of encouragement and hope? You are not alone. Um, at least what, one in ten women globally have a PCOS and one in six women in Nigeria have this syndrome. You are not alone. But please take your reproductive health seriously. Speak to a gynecologist. Speak to a nutritionist. Um, Make sure that you're looking after yourself. Please do not like, cause, because PCOS causes you to want to eat a lot of sugar. Please do not listen to those sugar cravings. In, in moderation is what we should do everything. Um, and yeah, just really take care of yourself. Um, Thank you and so much. And seek help, yeah. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for this eye-opening um, conversation. Because I'm sure a lot of women who probably have it and are not, are aware, not aware of what the issue is have now been enlightened today. Yeah. So I wish you good luck with your promotion on your Thank new you. documentary and continues, you should continue to lend your voice to your course. <laughs> we admire you for that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for being with us on Perspectives. Thanks so much. Anyway, last but not the least, we're coming to the end of the show. But remember, by trying to break the glass ceiling, women are transforming the traditional notions of leadership, bringing fresh perspectives, empathy, and collaboration to the table. It is important for organizations and politicians to take steps to address these barriers and create a more inclusive and diverse leadership landscape. Our collective power, armed with knowledge, will allow us to overcome these obstacles as see more women in leaders as, as, as leaders in our society today. And always remember life is a learning curve. But before we take our leave, however, kindly pause and take a look at the following video, which encapsulates what it means to experience life on the other side as a woman, as a woman, men wearing high heels. Believe me, as we celebrate Women's Month, take it to the bank that our women are the real MVPs. That's all we have for today, all we have time for today. So you've been watching Perspectives here on Arise News with me, Ruth Osimi. See you next week. <laughs>